evening and welcome to the Lap of the Monkey Music Show. Taylor Van Derek Davis. Derek is the singer of Babylon AD and also a great solo performer I want to talk about also. But we've got a new album to talk about, a live album. Live Lightning. What's, what's, what's up with that, man? It's pretty awesome. I got a preview, luckily. And, uh, oh, it's really good. Yeah. It's really good. It's really good. It, um, it sounds great. Thanks. What, what was the impetus to get this album, live album out? Well, uh, we've been working on new material for a, for a uh, new studio album for a while now. You know, actually, we started before COVID did. And, uh, well, we, before COVID, COVID came and kind of crushed everything, you know. Uh, so we had a, a batch of songs written and we were working on uh, doing, a, doing a new follow-up album. You know, we put out, uh, 2018, we put out uh, Revelation Highway on Frontiers Records. And uh, then COVID hit, and at the same time we were in in the uh, studio writing songs and everything like that. And um, as time went on, we just kind of took a break through COVID, like everybody else did. And we started getting back into it. And then uh, Paris Records, Tom Mathers, the uh, president, called us and asked us if we were doing uh, doing anything. You know, uh, if we were going to go back in the studio. And I said, Yeah, we are. We actually started practicing again, and we're going to do something. I said, But it wouldn't be ready probably till next year. You know, right. like maybe. January or February or something next year. Oh, sorry about that, man. No problem. Um, anyways, uh, so I, I had uh, three concerts that we had recorded over the last few years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, you know, I could probably put together a live thing. He said, well, that'd be great. Put together a live thing and then kind of let everybody know that we're, we're back and playing yeah. again. And Jesus. sorry about that, man. Okay. I'm going to turn my phone off. You know, so it's it's basically like a teaser for the studio album and to let everybody know that, you know, we're back and uh, functioning and, and working again. So um, it took a while to put the, put it together, maybe a couple months. You know, I had to listen to about 16 tracks of three different gigs to find out which track sounded the best. And uh, it, it came pretty apparent that there was two gigs that sounded really good and one gig just sounded bad. It, it just wasn't recorded right. So after listening about three or four songs on that one, I just I didn't even listen to it anymore. I just yeah. kept the two two shows that sounded the best, and then kind of whittled down the sixteen songs till I had four, fourteen songs. Um, and that's how that came about. So, so actually, this is interesting. You weren't planning on recording it, so how were you recording them? Like right off the board, like just to begin no, with. Yeah, we were, yeah, our sound guy records right off the board, and he just ha he always has a wave files with him. So I just. Uh, you know, uh, he he actually sent them to me maybe about four or five years ago because this was like 2017, 2018, 2019, around that time when we were playing right before COVID. Uh, that he he'd recorded, you know, the three gigs, you know, yep. and uh, he had sent me sent me sent me the way fives, but I just sat on them, you know, I didn't even listen to them or anything. I didn't even know if we were ever going to use them, but I had them, you know. Yeah, uh, but then I just dug them out, you know, just went treasure hunting. Well, if I was in a band, I think like performing, I would probably record myself all the time because I think it's a great tool. I know a lot of bands do that, you know, mm -hmm. you know, to go back and listen to it again. And, you know, and, you know, especially a lot of like a lot of, like Zappa and Holdsworth and a lot of those artists used to go back and pick through and they're playing. Maybe not so much in the rock and roll world as much because because more it's more with the energy and the performance. But yeah. I mean, you get some nuggets like this, you have a really great night and there's your live album. There's your special show. Exactly. You're like, oh. You, you never know. You know, you always tape over it or well, record over funny. it. A, a few of the songs, like I'll just pick one of them out, like uh, or this, a song that was on our, our last album on Frontier Records, um, off the Revelation Highway album, a song called One Million Miles. And it has keyboards and strings like that in it and everything like that. But live, you know, we don't have any of that stuff. It's just two guitars, bass and drums. But I got to tell you, man, it that song just, wow, it just really blew me away. It just really came alive, you know, uh, like it was without all the extra instrumentation you know it's just it really did it just blew me away man it remind me of like peter frampton's comes alive you know when he put out like show me the way the first out the album was show me the way was yeah. kind of sterile and you know it was cool yeah but when you hear it on the live album you're like whoa this is a whole new song even it's the exact same song just it because does, it the, sounds the, good. yeah you feel like the skeleton and then like the framework mm -hmm. is done and then I do get that, you know, and it's really interesting. I was actually, I was just watching that video before we, we started talking was the One Million Miles. Um, looks like that was a fun video to shoot. It looks yeah. like it was a good day to go to the, excuse to go to the beach and jam is what it feels like. Right, go to the beach, yeah. 
He's great, man. Um, as we talk about this, people just just because the, this album is, is a really good starting point to go back, but uh, the last album's good. The, the albums are all good, you know. So let's we'll use this as your entry, your gateway drug to kind of roll back and check out the other albums. But what's really good with this album is you know, and like you know, like desperate, like everything fits, like the old songs and the new songs, and maybe songs. Listen to knowing some of the other albums and then hear them live the way they all fit in together. Uh huh. I don't think I could have sat down and said, this is a set list I would have picked out from different songs. Like maybe uh-huh. I would have tried to think differently. And um, it, was, it was a nice surprise because those are songs that probably, some of the songs I would have thought would have been so cohesive uh, yeah. in it. You, you, and it's you, not a bad thing by any means. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm third, saying, right? It's Yeah. You're the third person that said that. It's like, wow, I would have never thought you put like Love Blind on there or... Uh, yeah. Sinking in the sand on there, but somehow that's they what I was thinking together. exactly when I heard that. That's like you know, somehow they fit, you know. <laughs> it because was you know, different periods of time and everything like that. But yeah, I mean, when we play live, I mean, you know, there's five guys up on stage playing, and we're just kicking ass and just you know having a good time and playing like the the way we feel them and the way we you know the way it comes out. So I, I kind of think that uh, it, it doesn't matter. It's still us. It's still my voice. It's still the lead guitar play. It's right. you know so. It, yeah, it doesn't sound totally different, but it does, like the albums are just a little bit different in the time period. You're right, but thinking the sand, I was like, I was not expecting that. It's like that's cool. And I know you guys did another album before, so you gotta be careful. Repeat yourself, but there's certain standards you have to do. I mean, every band yeah. has to do a few songs, otherwise, it's what kind of live album yeah. you're missing. This, you know what I mean? Like you know, you can't stuff into a live album without "I Want You to Want Me" or something. You know what I mean, you have right, to do your, exactly. You yeah. have to do certain songs. Right, exactly. Um, there was a couple songs I wish we would have had, but. I didn't have them. They weren't recorded like uh, So Savage a Heart, you know? Okay, yeah. I didn't have that one, but I was like, man, I wish I would have had that one, you know, to put on the put on the record. That was a great song on the second album, you know? I didn't have it recorded, so I couldn't didn't do it, you know? For some well, reason, maybe you record it can, now. Maybe well, you can only do a couple ballads per show if you're doing 10, 12, 14 songs, you know? You don't want to have three or four ballads, so we had, uh, I think, on most of those shows, we did Desperate and One Million Miles. Right. But we didn't have So Savage a Heart, you know? We, You know, we didn't have it. Tell, tell the audience it's a special recording, and then you can put it out as a B-side on something else. I think the fans will dig it. Yeah. yeah. You know, how many I times mean, are our videos done, you go, okay, we're going to shoot the video today, and how many people have to sit and listen to the same song pre-recorded over and over again? Right. I think your audience would love to hear an extra ballad that's going to be on an album, because everyone's got, yeah, I was there. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Yeah. I know, you know? what you mean. I think it's a cool thing. Um, as you guys are doing the album and looking back, so are the other guys pretty stoked? Do they feel like this album's pretty good? You know, yeah, everybody's pretty, uh, pretty. Uh, what's the word? Surprised how good it sounds. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, it could have sounded really crappy. You know, but but it didn't. You know, and and just sitting there, mixing, kind of remixing the songs. You know what I mean? Trying to yeah. keep them as as real as possible but of course you're going to add a little bit of low end or, or whatever you're going to master it and you're going to try to clean it up a little bit you know what i mean but it was really interesting that this i hear like little mistakes here and there or mm-hmm. tempo changes things like that you know what i mean but most people don't or maybe i'll change a lyrical line or something like that you know uh but i don't think most people even catch it you know what i mean but it's live, so you didn't really change anything. It's not like you you went in and you did overdubs and you guys like really. No, it's no, almost... no. So, so like there, there's mistakes here and there. There's a couple of times the guitars sound like they're out of tune just a little bit on certain parts and stuff like that. But that's you know, awesome. That it, Eric is well, awesome. That's what I mean. I think it's cool. I mean, you know? look what's going on right now in rock and roll with everyone's playing backup, uh, playing tracks now live. The first time out, they're not even getting live the first time out. So just doing a live album. We are breathing and making mistakes and clicky things and feedback and whatever. Are you just out of yeah. breath or whatever, whatever it is. It's yeah. awesome. That means it's real. It means a human, human person right. performing for you. That's great. Yeah. I mean, we grew up with a lot of our live albums. How many have we found out that aren't really live? Well, I went and did a couple of overdubs. Next thing you know, you're like, are you kidding me? I thought this was a live album. You know, yeah. as a kid, you're like all these. I was reading a things. story about that. Something like, did you know that? I, I can't remember what the count was, but. 80% of all live albums are actually done in the studio. I was like, what? It was like, blew me away. I was like, wait a minute, man. I listened to Cheap Trick Live at Budokan and Kiss 
live and so are you trying to you know like which ones you know which ones are not done live you know you want to know you know i'm gonna hit the money on kiss and kiss not being um uh, i'm being the overdub ones though i will <laughs> yeah i, th I think they're, they're you know, perfectionists i think it's hard i think a lot of people don't want to go in and have their mistakes over and over again you know yeah i think that was just the way it was so that's why i think this is cool this is kind of special and I, and 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 the way you just described it you're like oh yeah we just had these files and you say yeah four or five years it's kind of funny because it's like 23 already and like it feels like it was just 2019, like a minute ago. It's just been a That's, weirdest, man, right? It, 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 this is the fastest. I, four years, I, it's weird, right? I don't even know how to explain it. The, the last yeah. four, since 2019, it just went by like a rocket to me. Yeah. You know, it just, I don't know, you know. I don't know if yeah, I'm just I, getting it, older or just uh, everything's happened so fast in the world, you know. Yeah, you can get older. You can, if you want to stop from it, we can yell some people to go off our lawn if you want. It makes it better. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can go off our lawn. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it's but it it's it's good and but the way you're like oh we just had some tracks recorded but it wasn't like planned so the fact that it sounded so good in the mix you know what I mean when I heard it it yeah. felt like it was professionally recorded like 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 planned recording you know like get a truck out there and you didn't it doesn't feel like a soundboard because yeah. some bands will do that and it's fine because sometimes you'll be like especially back in the 80s and 90s mm -hmm. you you have what you have and sometimes the board wasn't the best but it's live and a lot of bands have that and you're like that's fine that's all you have I'll take it yeah. This doesn't feel like that. This literally feels like it was on purpose for this project. So kudos to you on, on, on getting good tapes and good mixing. You know, what um, is the plans now with the band? Because I know you, you're doing some solos. You do your solo too. Yeah. How are you? How are you about going to find the balance of doing what? Like, what's the future of? Well, uh, it's, uh, actually, right before. Tom had called me about three, three months ago or so, four months ago, before we started the live thing, you know, when he talked to us into doing the live thing, uh, I had a batch of, I do have a batch of about 10 or 11 songs that I was going to put out on another record, mm -hmm. another solo record. But since this, I think I'm just going to wait and, and keep writing some more songs and wait until the Babylon AD thing is, this will take a year for us, you know, um, and the next record is going to take, like I said, it's going to come out uh, at the beginning of next year. So I'm thinking about a year and a half before I release anything on my own again. But I have a, I have a, like I said, about ten songs that are recorded. They could be mastered and, and put the to disc right now if I wanted them to. But uh, I kind of did that on uh, on my Revolutionary Soul record. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened with that was I I put the record out and then we got a record deal within like a month, not even a month later, I got a record deal from Frontiers for Babel on AD. So it was like all the promotion and all the work that I was going to do for a revolutionary soul album, my solo album just got thrown by the wayside. So I had, you know, I had that came out, I think it was March of 2017. And then uh, Revelation Highway came out, Babel on AD, like November you know, but we were in the studio working on it. So I didn't have no time to even promote the record. And I just figured I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to make sure that I have enough time to promote anything and everything that I do, whether it's Bab Babylon ED or whether it's uh, my solo stuff, you know? Well, I think you're competing with yourself. That's right. I know yeah. you are. You're just competing with yourself and it's kind of, and, you, and you, you're tearing yourself uh, in half, you know, because well, you're well, not yeah. sure to put your energy, you know? You're already competing with a, an army of uploads as it is. You don't yeah, need to I'm add right. yourself to it too. <laughs> <laughs> You're like one more person, please. Um, <laughs> and, and, I think a lot of the thing I like, I like what a lot of artists do is they'll do like an album and then do a solo and an album because it kind of feels nice or they'll, you know, because that way they can break it up and it, it feels it's healthier for artists to like, feel like more, more of a longevity of a band because that yeah. way, you know, the band is a, a band project and then other artists too, not just a singer or a guitar player, you know what I'm saying? They do something yeah. different. And, and then they come the back same, again. At the same time, uh, some of the songs that I write, they fall into the Bat ba Babylon ED category, and but most of them don't. So that's what's good about having two other guitar players that write music, you know, because John or Ron will give me an idea of, of a, a guitar riff, you know, they'll send it over to me and I'll, oh, that sounds good. And I'll make it into something, you know, it'll, mm -hmm. become, it'll become a song. I try to get those guys at least give me two parts. To a song so that i can at least have a chorus and a verse then i can work out a pre-hook or a bridge or a breakdown or whatever else we got to do but if i could get a good melody over a verse and a good melody over a chorus then it's pretty pretty much home free you know what i mean and then most of the songs that i write they're just 100 percent done and i here here's a song you know what i mean 
all you got to do is follow this drum beat and play this bass line. And, you know, but of course, we'll, we'll we'll tear it apart a little bit as a band and maybe add a couple little things and make it a band sound. But I'm pretty aware of what songs fit with Babylon AD and what songs don't when I'm writing, you know. that That's the thing. And it's an interesting point you bring up because sometimes like there's a, um, you give a band, you still need to have somebody or a crew, but you still need to have somebody kind of steering the ship. Yeah. Because, you know, five head, it's a five headed monster. It could be a five headed monster. And yeah. it's gonna be going like this. Yeah, you kind of need somebody to, to you need somebody to kind of say, all right, it's a band, but the final word, the final decision, the the, the well, ultimate direction. Everybody, everybody pretty much over the years, you know, it's just it, it it's a trust factor. You know, I've got the recording studio. Ron's got a recording studio too, a, a, a nice little recording studio, but I've got the major recording studio and and so I do most of the work, you know, yeah. but that's what I've always done. And they feel comfortable with give, giving their ideas into my hands. Yep. Sometimes they'll give me three or four songs and make, there might only be one that's, ah, uh, this one's great, but the rest of them, I don't want to say they suck, but they're just not up to snuff of what I think a Babylon AD song should be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so it's, it's kind of good because if you have three writers that are writing material, writing guitar riffs and things like that, you could pretty much start, you know, you might have 30 ideas and dwindle it down to like 10 or 12. You know what I mean? That's why you don't want to have filler. That's what I mean. I don't like having filler on any album myself, and and uh, we try to pride ourselves on that. And I and I don't feel like when I listen to any of our albums that there's anything that I don't like on them. That you know, I don't listen and go, "Why did we do that song, man? That song is not that good." You know, I'm always, "Wow, this song is a good song." Uh, you, song. As an artist, you'd want to do it because I think you know, I think the worst time period I think for filler songs is probably the late '80s and '90s when they're trying to push it out. You get a couple yeah. big songs and the rest of the albums are, and you're like that's a good artist why do they have like it's like it could have been an ep they were in a rush to go back on tour yeah but that's nowadays, exactly. yeah. right in the, in the record labels and i'm not beating up the, the bands i'm saying the record labels you know which were actually i like to say i like to call them banks i like to call them the banks the banks would push them back out before they could do what they were hired to do you know it's like getting a relationship because they love you and they're like what well, we want you to be to change now because <laughs> you're like you got me for a reason let me be who I am. Yeah. Um, but as an artist, you want to do the best of what you can. If it takes you right. a couple of years, if it takes you a month, if it takes yeah. you your Chinese democracy length, you know, it Whoa, takes you long. as long as it takes. That was, <laughs> I don't know. That was an that was expensive long joke. If it takes that long, you should probably <laughs> that not was be the most studio. expensive, longest wait in the history of music. You should take. probably not be in the studio. You should probably just, you know what, do a home studio, take the money, do a home studio, just demo it for 10 years <laughs> and then go back in there. It feels like a lot of money. Um, and I've heard you, I've heard on that album that there's a lot of tracks that they're still out there that that they have that they've never released. Oh God, it's got to be like thirty five or forty. Oh, there's got to be because that yeah. was the thing that band never was short on material. Yeah, you know, well, I like I, I like to watch Chinese Democracy, but like listen to it separately. It doesn't sound like Guns and Roses that we mm -hmm. know. It's kind of separately. Like it's songs, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's, but it's, but song wise though, there are some pretty good songs on them. I can't yeah. knock it out. It's not popping in Guns N' Roses thing is what it is. I think, um, yeah. but 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 to this point, I think it's good that you have the time. And and nowadays, you really can't do filler. I mean, look at the bands now. Look at your look at your peers after COVID. Look, some of these bands have put the best albums of their lives out now. Yeah, maybe it's because we're all uh, a little just a little bit older and have a little bit more time, and we've got well, COVID gave a lot of time. Yeah, and we've got uh, recording studios, and uh, you know, um, maybe I, you know, it, it's hard to tell, man. I, I, I don't know, but uh, I do know that a lot of people have said to us and said to me too, "Why are you putting out albums? Nobody buys albums anymore. You know, they just buy singles." And I'm like, man, I don't give a shit. I'm from the old fucking school. You know what I mean? Right. I want to, I want to see a record. I want to hear a record. I want to, I want to. Touch it. I want to go, wow, look at that. I want to see like a body of artwork on it. No, not yep. just one song. You know what I mean? Because that's just, it, it, it's not, a, I've, and I put singles out. I put three or four singles out, but that was only because, you know, I, I wanted something to do. I put a video and a yeah. single out. You know what I mean? It's like, well, I can wait till another year before it comes out, yeah. but I just want to put it out now. You know what I mean? I think what is interesting is, and, and, I respect bands that want to do it differently because how they sell and stuff. I wouldn't want to go through the stress of the finances. I, as a fan, enjoy the bands I sold into, still doing new music, doing complete albums. I get that it might not be worth it financially for them or whatever whatever it is. I, you know, I don't I don't slide anybody. I appreciate when an artist like you does a, does a whole album. 
Um, I think one of the meat in the middle things is is because like if, if singles is how it goes nowadays a lot is to do right. like an album and then do like what do they call it a, a waterfall release is it? Were you, were, I think that's what it's called. I, I yeah, I'm, I'm behind the times. <laughs> I, I learned I learned it from an artist actually on the show. Um, I think what they do is they release like a new song every month, and then mm. by the end by the end of the year you've got an album. Mm. Because what makes me crazy is when I go on like an iTunes or something and I make a playlist and everybody has a bunch of singles. It's hard for me to get everything together to play right without having to like rename and rebuild a whole file for them. I just want oh, to play yeah. the albums. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. if they do the waterfall thing, it, uh, it eventually becomes, it lets them do singles for the, for the people that are quick, 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 quick. But it does build their album for the fans. At the end, at the end of the year, what they're going to do is they're gonna, they don't play it out. An album, release some vinyl, special vinyl. It gives them time to plan it out. You know, they play out a couple of videos, whether the lyric videos are or regular videos. Yeah, I notice a lot of people are doing those lyric lyric videos now. Yeah, it's a lot. It's they're fun. They're easy to do. I know that. I do all, all our videos. Matter of fact, I'm working on a video right now for uh for the for the live um <clears throat> live lightning al album. Uh, Kid goes wild. Okay. It's, gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. I mean, it's all live stuff, but man, the discolorization and the I don't know, you know, I'm tooting my own horn, but I, I really did some creative stuff with the live stuff. You know what I mean? It really looks cool, the video. And well, I'm be excited. Out, it'll it'll be coming out Friday, right? Right when the album is uh you know re released. Released. For, for I can appreciate that. I, I get it a lot. I've actually I've done a couple of lyric videos actually for, for some bands just because yeah, I just wanted to do it for their releases when they first came out, just because I wanted to do it for no reason. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to learn. I'm an editor, you know. I just wanted to do it for fun, so I can I can understand the, the excitement of just doing it. It's fun. Yeah, I've been doing I've been doing art videos. I did one million miles. I did. Uh, I've been doing art videos for. Oof. Actually, it's kind of funny because even when we when uh, we got signed to to Arista, I was you know, I, I don't know. You know, I I guess I got that eye. You know, I've I've always went to movies and I've seen everything, and I'm a very critical type of person when it comes to that stuff. Um, I was right with the director and the producer and the people that was doing everything in the editing room and everything. And I learned a lot yeah. of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, stuff what I don't like and stuff that I do like and had a lot of arguments on those first three or four videos we did with, with uh, Babylon AD on the first couple of albums. You know what I mean? It was So um, I, I kind of got, you know, educated myself on, on the video aspects and I've been doing videos for years, man. It's 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 really cool and and um actually the perfect thing is so with your, your one million miles video was that did you as a storyboard or did you have it loose in your mind and then you went and yes. you shot it all and yeah. then put it together yeah I I write up a storyboard it doesn't have it doesn't you know uh you kind of give it to everybody and say this is the idea you know what I mean although I know the storyboard back and forward this is the idea I'll give it to the to the camera guy and I'll give it to, everybody will look at it for a little while and get an idea of how it how I kind of want it, but then I'll get all the footage. I'll have all the footage shot, but I'll get all the footage. And then I edit what I think, Yeah, you know, what I want to see, I guess, really, <laughs> you know, cause you got a couple hours with the shit and you're like, Oh man, let's see. Does this solo yeah. part on his fingers look good here for that two second clip, you know, or half a second clip. Does this part work good? Should I speed that up? Should I color it? You know, you have all these, things that you can do you time it and then you find the best the best clip and then if the timing is not perfect with the song and you're like it's I'm done with this thing now i can tell you a really funny story um when we did bangle the bells mm -hmm. uh on our on our, our first album and we uh, two things the first thing is the camera guy had shot ron solo and in the editing if you look at that video if you look close at that video, you will see Ron, our guitar player, playing lead guitar, a big close-up come in on his hands on his guitar, and you'll see a long hair just hanging there off his finger, like stuck in his finger in his ring. <laughs> and we and I was like, cut that out, man. You gotta cut that out. And they never did. I mean, they they didn't listen to you. You know, you're like, man, don't you see there's a fucking hair hanging off his finger? I mean, it's a close-up, there's a hair, everyone could see it, you know. They didn't. We paid a lot of money to have this gigantic missile, man. Whenever you were, uh, we were at this uh, like airplane hangar, and they bring in this gigantic like missile bomb, man. It looked, it must have been, you know, fifty foot long, you know, and it was supposed to be part of the video. 
and 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 this chick's supposed to ride on it at the end of the video, or whatever. But when you see it, the way that they shot it, when you see it at the very end, that missile, which was about fifty foot long, looked like looked like it was about that big. It looked like it was like a like we we did it on purpose, like it was a comic strip or something. It was ridiculous, and I think we paid something like you know five thousand dollars just to have this big missile come in, and the missile got shot, and it was in the in the whole video for maybe three seconds, and it was about that big, you know. It was like, geez, that, that, you, guys... you know what I'm thinking of is is the spinal spinal tap when they drew on the napkin, oh. and it comes down, and it, he's like <laughs> dancing yeah. around it. Oh well, yeah, we yeah. live spinal tap. I think a lot of bands live spinal tap. We 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 lived it. Trust me. That's what I have to go back and watch a video now. I don't think I wasn't paying attention. I don't remember that off the top of my head. You'll see it when you start playing lead guitar. You'll you'll crack up. You'll go, oh shit! There's that hair. The hair's there. It would make me crazy. And it, it's funny because, but like you know, what I'm saying, like if you're editing, and it's not about the timing of the song or something. There's something about the cut, the timing though. If you're if you're if you're editing at something, it's a different yeah. kind of cut than somebody else will watch. You like I don't see it. You're like no, the timing's not right on this cut. Or yeah. something else. It's yeah. not the music itself. You wouldn't catch it, but it's it's something with the footage. It's not yeah. as flowing. You want you know. it to float, you want to have a lot of energy. If it doesn't have any energy, then it's like, you know? Well, and that's harder. That was a hard, and I think, like, with your performance, you did a performance video. People haven't seen it. I want people to go back and watch all these videos, too. But um, the, the, the the newer one, it's, it's it's a beach. It's beach footage, but you're playing live at the beach. Oh, uh, One and, Million Miles? The one yeah, did that. that's, yeah. But it's also a combination. It's got some, <clears throat> some, some footage of you. You're driving and some moments, like, you know, some yeah, story that, line. Was hand, that was just all a handheld. I'd say, I just told my wife, here, hold my camera while I'm driving. Here, now I'm going to hold my camera while I'm driving. And, you know, <laughs> simple shit like that. But the footage, the the movement, the movement, and here, I'm going to stick it right on the top of, you know, uh, the mirror, and you're going to see all the footage go by. But I'm going to shoot it fast, and I'm going to discolorate, you know, color colorize it and everything like yeah. that. So you get a lot of different but it's, it's always moving. And um, for, for instance, another thing on that video, we were in, um, we were in, uh, God damn, what's that island in uh, uh, Italy uh, off the coast where all the gangsters hang out. Yeah. Sicily. We were in Sicily uh -huh. and in Sicily, they have tunnels everywhere. And these tunnels could last man, like shit, a half hour. You could be in, in the mountain in a tunnel. Really? Yeah. So I got that camera out and I stuck it right there right at the windshield, right where you see everything. And bam, we just, all I did was just record that whole tunnel ride and it's got lights and all this crazy shit. So that's in that video, but it's really super fast motion. So it looks like you're going about a thousand miles an hour. You know, you don't know even you're going through a tunnel unless somebody told you. Right. And that you footage, I mean? so you can you can use it now in one of your lyric videos. You can, that's a good footage to, to, to reuse, it's slower. <laughs> yeah, man, I got so much footage of, of uh, so many other types of videos and things man it's, it's sometimes it's a little overwhelming how much stuff i got and uh and i'll remember like wait a minute there's that one shot in that that i took that one day you know and then i'll go looking for it <laughs> you know i've got them on little zip drives or you know what yeah, whatever sure. they're pieced together everywhere you know so you actually said so you have a full-on studio so are you producing people too also I used to produce a lot of people, but I don't have any time anymore. I, I, I stopped doing that just because I start I stopped started just not having enough time for myself. And yeah. sure, I was making a little bit of money here and there producing other people. You know what I mean? But uh, hell, I'd spend, you know, a couple of weeks in the studio on somebody else when I could have been and I'd make some money. But I I, I wouldn't have time for myself. Right. You know, so and I still have close friends even. Come on, man. Just produce my song. No, I don't have no time, man. I just tell them I don't have no time. Even if I do, I say I don't have any. <laughs> well, I was going to just put that there. If, you, if that was something that you still do, let people know. But obviously, don't don't ask him. He doesn't do it. He's on time. No, um, no, I don't want to do it. You know, unless somebody gives me a big fat ten thousand dollar check and says, "Here, here's three weeks." Okay, yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> you know, but well, the problem is with friends, it's not. It's actually it's less. It's even less than what you normally make because they want a favor, and then it's like my time's still worth money. And yeah. it's weird because we're friends. Yeah. Sometimes uh, I'll, I'll mix a song for a, a friend or two. I did that a couple weeks ago. I actually mixed it, mixed a song and mastered it for them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it, it, if I like the song, I'm, oh, that's a good song, you know? And they'll go, yeah, it's pretty good. No, it's a great song. Let me just mix it. And it'll be, it'll be better. You know, and then I'll kind of fix it for them and I'll give it back to them. They're like, holy smokes. Now this song's great. Hold you. It's a good song. You know? 
that's a cool thing to do. Um, so the release is on the seventeenth. You got a video coming out. Any other things we're gonna do to push this album, support it out there, like live performances and kind of any anything? Yeah, we're, we're we're booking gigs right now. Um, uh, we've got four or five gigs booked right now, and we've got a booking agent that's looking into some more. What we don't want to do is get. It's kind. It's kind of a, like we have a small problem because we're working on an album at the same time, mm -hmm. so we don't want to go out there and and go out for a month or something like that, and you know, and and take away all, all that time. So we're just trying to do weekend warrior type of stuff, you know, which most bands do anyways. That's that's the model nowadays. It's 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 that's affordable. Kind of the model nowadays, and 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 uh, some festivals and things like that. I know we we've got a pretty cool date. At the, we haven't played the whiskey in about five years, so I'm kind of excited about, about doing that we're playing the whiskey on september 2nd and, and that's way out there but still um it's gonna be fun to be back in la again i haven't been there in about five years since the last time we played there you know what i mean and i we used to, we all all used to live there i lived there for like seven years and it's weird how every time i go back to los angeles now it's like wow this is like knott's berry farm or disneyland or it's not like the hollywood that i hung out in you no, know i've heard it's i heard it's not where it used to be everyone's leaving no. you know everyone goes to nashville or yeah, Carolinas or Florida, yeah. anywhere. Yeah, it's not yeah. rock and roll land anymore. Uh -uh. Um, and, but I, you still, know, I, I still like hanging out on the strip or going to uh, the Rainbow and having dinner, you know, that kind of stuff. There's still got a little bit of a vibe still left, you know? Yeah, the Rainbow and the Whiskey, and there's a couple clubs left there, but there's a small scene going on. It's very so small school, but it's still fun when you're there for a, for a, for a night, two nights right. maybe, you know? I think, but, but as you say, and, and it, I wouldn't even call it the weekend warrior thing because I think it, at this point it's become more than that because it almost feels like it takes away from the artist when people say, oh, they're just a weekend. What people don't realize is when you're on a tour, it's $1,000 a day for a van, a bus or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you got insurance and then you got gas and then you're pulling the merch behind oh, you. So you, so then you look at that, then you get the band, you got food. And then sometimes you can't even stay in a hotel because then, you know, obviously you're on a bus. Yep. You have to, you have to make money, which means you have to play X amount of gigs. And if you're playing a couple of big ones then you have to hit cities and play these weird clubs and they're like why are you playing that club because we need gas money and, yeah. it, and it it's a weird it's a weird thing for the band and it, and it puts the band in a weird spot and it tires them out and it kind of deflates the the value of your brand because they're like why are we going to pay you this if you just play this club here why are you going to play this other venue mm -hmm. you know um but when you do it like this, you go and you're especially flying and you're resting. You're we're, we're older now. You, you can't do that. Yeah. I, I know that a good performance. You got you know? the back lines. You don't got to take all your shit with you. You just tell them what you need, you know, and the drummer's just got to bring his yeah. sticks. The guy just brings his guitar yeah. and maybe, a, you know, a small foot pedal or something like that. It's a lot easier than it used to be, you know, carrying everything yeah. on the road. Um, yeah, that was I, I mean, I love being on the road years ago, but, you know, that's when you were young, man, you, you know your college age kid, man. And you're on the road and the whole damn world just was like, wow. It's like your oyster. It was like your party zone every single night. You know, it was a different world though. Yeah. It was Being different. on the road was a, was a different I don't thing. Think these kids nowadays have that kind of even imagination of, of what it was like back then, man. Cause it was pure mayhem for, for us anyways. And most, most bands that I know, you know, I think it, I think it ended during grunge. I think some of the grunge guys were yeah, rock they, and rollers and they kind of carried it on. Some of them did. Yeah, you know, yeah, alternative bands that kept some of it, not all of it, but uh, that was little, it, I think. Got a little depressing there for a few years. <laughs> it got real sad. <laughs> it got sucked you know, out. Yeah, we. It's, it's hard because there's a there's some good music. I'm not going to totally knock out. I mean, hair metal ate itself in a way. I call it hair metal because it's just lazy to say that. Yeah, because you became a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Yeah, something fresh came in, and 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 what happened is it aged out. Our age. Because what happened, I was in college for recording and video. So I do this, whatever. And I was in college when your album came out and, you know, whatever. And once you get out of college, your your money, your expendable money, it's gone. Mm -hmm. You can't go to shows as much as you want. At the same time, Grunge comes in, that's a younger generation. Not a lot. Not that we're old at that point. But that's the new income. The yeah. teens and stuff. So you're like, oh, I mean, like I saw Alice in Chains. I saw Alice in Chains open for, um, I saw Alice in Chains open for Extreme. For, wow. when extremely doing porno graffiti in a small club that was insane um so it did work but, but i guess my point is it, 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 you change financially also in your 20s and your 30s your your viewing is different what's happening now for a lot of bands a lot of bands are making more money now i think it's because 
we all can go back out again. We all have jobs and security. We're older now. Our kids are older. We have money, disposable income, and you guys can do weekends and make a better paycheck and go to a casino, go to a, go to a festival, see some friends, make some cash, and have the rest of the week off. Yeah, that I I see the same same way too. I I uh I see a lot of people like I play in another band with uh with Dan De La Rosa, the guitar player in Babylon AD. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Marty Shuhart, he used to play with Greg Ken and uh, a guy guy named ba- Ben Wong. He's a great bass player. He used to play with Montrose. And we just have a little side project that's really fun. It's when we're called the Heavy for 70s. And all we do is only four bands, Montrose, Aerosmith, Thin Lizzy, and UFO. And we do five nice. or six songs of each, each thing. And I got to tell you, every single time we play, like we just played on Saturday, mm-hmm. the guys are my age, the, the chicks are my age or whatever, you know, they're, everybody's yeah. in their late. 40s and 50s or whatever but everybody's rocking like it like they're 15 again you know because they have they've been starved for that kind of music yeah. for that nobody's playing it everybody's played all the all the journey and the bon jovi and the the whatever the big hits yeah. of this but, you know we're doing a little bit the hard rock you know yeah. we're not doing dc dc but it's the same exact time period well there's a niche, there's a niche you know and, and i can say even i think it's, it's funny you say this I've been reading, you know, like you read on Facebook, some people get mad. They're like, man, these people go online and and um, they'll go to a cover show, but they won't go see my band, like, you know, friends, or whatever. I mean, friends, you can't expect your friends to go see your shows. It's like expecting your friends to go to, go to your job. Like, you know, if they yeah. want to go, you want to go. You want them to naturally want to come. You can't get mad if they don't want to come. If they have one night off and they want to see hits of songs they know. You know what I mean? It's, it's how it goes. And people like to see a bunch of hits on their night off. It's generational. You can't. I, I think I don't think there's anything wrong with it. A lot of people are doing it. I, like you doing it. I go see that show. I love, especially because I love UFO and no one does UFO. No one does UFO. And I no love UFO. First either. Right. Yeah. So, so to me, it's great. And I'll see a regular, I'll see a live music too. I'll see a original band. But you, you don't have to choose. I mean, just people are going to see what they want to see. And I think, I think the cover band thing is good. You know, money's money. Live music is live music. Well, you know, now it's called tribute band. You know, you got to be a tribute band. But I got to tell you what, man, uh, there is so many tribute bands. And I'd say 95% of them are just shit. The ones I've seen around, you know, and they're playing all the time. A lot of them. Yeah. You know, there were Corporate bon games, Jones, weddings. You see them and then they got some overweight chick that's about 300 pounds singing. You're like, this is a Bon Jovi tribute band. <laughs> you know, you're just scratching your head. You know? Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's a challenge. I, if people want to see the band, they make money. I mean, you can't. It's it's different. You think about it, though. Think about when you when, when Babylon and and that was the genre. How many other bands were out there that looked similar from the outside? That were, yeah. but, but but internally, there was a yeah. lot of horrible music back then. Yeah, let's be honest. You know, I mean, not everybody was great in the hair metal scene or the metal scene or the rock scene back then or bluesy I scene. Think, uh... I think it just it just it got oversaturated. No, but I'm saying it's perspective. It's, once something is got working, the tribute cover thing is working now, mm-hmm. which means it's going to be a lot of it. Yeah. Which and it's a lot of anything. It's going to be a lot of garbage inside of it. You got to filter it out. Yeah. Everybody thinks that they're just going to be the greatest cover band. And the ones I've seen, anyone, well, they, they call them tribute bands around here. And everybody's I'm Journey revised. I'm Led Zeppelin this, I'm Leonard Skinner that, or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'd say, like I said, I 75% of them don't even have, like, any kind of look or identity of the band. They sound like crap, you know? And you're just like, but they're getting pretty good gigs because they're yeah. doing never. Hey, I'm a Blondie cover band, you know? Okay, you know? There's, I don't see, I'll be honest, I don't really see a lot of cover bands because I don't like going out. I usually just see what I want to see. I'm pretty particular about it at this point. I've seen so many bands in my life so many of the original bands in the shows like for me i don't feel the need to have to go out but uh there's one band um that is a deep purple cover band beyond purple um oh, wow, that'd be, now that'd be cool see i'd be interested to see that and um well it's, it's jimmy bell from autograph and house of lords oh yeah, that's this, gotta be awesome so it's so and um what's his face oh who's the drummer oh i can't think of his name now he's playing with um Dokken right now i think <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I can't even, I, I escaped my name. He's a great drummer. I can't think of his name now. The band's fantastic. So it's like one of their other side things they do, you know, because Jimmy does everything. Uh, cause I'm, I'm up in New England. I'm up in Connecticut. So so Jimmy's like a, a local person for me. Okay. Uh, 
And so, so yeah, but Beyond Purple, like that's a band I'll see. They do a really that, good job. That sounds, you know, it, that sounds something cool that I'd like to see. You yeah. Know? I actually think they have sneak in like other stuff too related to it. So it's like the the, the Deep Purple family, I think. I could yeah, be wrong yeah. if they make quotes people, whatever. But I want to say I think there's like you know white snakey things. Like I think some of those songs yeah, kind of like throwing a little rainbow or a little bit of I think I think so. I don't remember now. Uh last time I went. Um but that's cool. that but that's what my point is that you can do it right. And like you're you're saying something that I've seen it, it yeah, there are things out there. We're doing like I said, what what I what we're doing, and it's just for fun, but and we've only practiced four times, you know, but we played maybe 10 gigs and all the gigs are packed. And people are just like, wow, this is the shit. You know, you're like, yeah, this was the stuff. Huh? When I was a kid in high school and elementary school, it's like, this was the stuff, man. You know? It, it, it's definitely weird now. Um, so where can people, is, where do you want people to reach you from all this stuff? And you got a lot going on, like to update. Is it, you on Facebook? Where can we direct people to, to keep oh, yeah, up with I mean, you, the I band, to, solo? I mean, you can go to, if you wanted anything about the Babylon ID, it's babylonid.com or Facebook. Babylon ED, um, Derek Davis, Facebook, uh, Derek Davis music. Usually I have everything tied into Derek Davis music. Yep. Derek Davis music.com, Derek Davis music, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. You know? Okay. I just use one in particular. I, I always put the links beneath the podcast and YouTube for people, but I don't oh. think there's a specific one you want it also on top sure. of that to focus yeah. on, you know, like a, one main place. Cause some people are like, yeah, I have all that stuff, but I only really update one. <laughs> You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, well, that's another thing too. Is you you kind of uh, all this social media shit, man. It's like it's on. You almost want to just can I just hire somebody that does this an hour a day for me? You know, because everybody thinks you know. I've got people telling me you got to get on TikTok. You better do Instagram. You better. I'm like, yeah. man, I don't have time to do that shit. All right, I'm writing a song. I don't got time to get on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook every day. And you know, I don't have time for that shit. You know what I mean? I but but he said you got to do it, and you're like, fuck. I I do it I do it, but not a hardcore. And I think you know because I get the same thing. Like you have a lot of big artists and, and a lot of good people in the show. You should be bigger than some other shows. I'm like I, I have the energy to to promote too. I I put all my time into the show, into the quality of the show. Yeah. I can't be over socializing. I'll I'll do a little bit of social work to post it on you know, my social media, but I don't even put. I don't pay people to do my social media. I don't have a huge social media because I don't. I don't work it like you're supposed to. You know what I mean? It's very organic, you know, because I just can't, you know, yeah. something's going to suffer and the show would suffer if I was you got kind of social. You, you know, you got to figure out how you're going to spend your time. You know? Yeah. So it's a slow, it's a slow thing. I got it. I get it, man. You know, so I hope, I hope this show and I hope people watch this or hear it and, and direct some people over your way. You know, yeah. uh, you, you have some good stuff. You have some good soul stuff. Uh, the, the new album coming out is good. And, you know, you, you guys have done some good stuff in the past few years. And I think if people have no know, know you from the earlier years, when we were younger, and those, you know, bigger hits, you know, the videos. And now they're like, oh, this age group or whatever. It, what have you been up to? Go back. Go back. Listen to his soul stuff. Listen to the last couple albums they've done. Very strong albums, you know. The band has just kept going, you know. So the, the quality hasn't wavered. There wasn't like a bad dip in the music you know what i mean you know it the music continued on uh and people just need to catch up they want to just you know that's my advice to everybody um any last words to everybody or anything you want to share uh, you know if we come to a city near you man come check out the band because we are a live band we can put on a kick-ass show uh the album will be coming out march 17th about a week and a half from now and um we're going to have a nice video. Kid Goes Wild is going to be premiered. Um, cool. Check that out because it's going to be really super cool. It's going to be a little bit of a different type of live video mm -hmm. that we're used to. And, um, you know, just Babylon is back. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on the show, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, too. Yeah, man.